Hi everybody, welcome back to Whole Wellness. My name is Anne and I appreciate you joining me today in a continuation on a little series we're doing about the Norris Knots. Now, in the first video, we talked a little bit more about the background and the reasons why I was inspired to do this little series. And this is part two of a three-part series, just as a reminder. This is intended to be an example, not a critical attack on the Norris Knots. This series is intended to be constructive feedback for those of us who are walking a path to wellness and mental and emotional and spiritual health. And one of the things we talk about on a pretty regular basis on this channel in regards to mental and emotional spiritual health is awareness. And one major facet of awareness, self-awareness and awareness of how you fit into different relationships in your life is being able to discern what's real and what's true against what is false or um, misrepresented. And I am just using the Norris Knots as an example of content creators who I have followed for years and am a fan of genuinely, but how some of their content wavers a little bit and skews the presentation that I believe they have well-meaning behind or well-intentions behind, but they are, in my personal opinion, so busy and so caught up in their sudden or explosive rise to fame, my words, um, and they are so busy and so preoccupied with creating content and managing their family vlog and social media presence and their content creations that they're not stopping to pause and think about what they're actually producing and putting out there. Now, we talked about a lot of stuff in video number one, the reasons behind this little video series that I've been thinking about doing it for a long time, what propelled me into making the final decision to do it. But one thing I just want to stress here is that this is meant to be constructive. This is not an attack on the Norris Knots. It's an applicable concept to consider. And the reason I selected the Norris Knots has a lot to do with the fact that they promote themselves as being a family vlog and a family-friendly channel that is um, the Norris Nuts are. If you have not watched video number one, please go back and watch video number one in its entirety before we get started in this video number two. Um, but real quick, the Norris Nuts are a, that's what they are called, that's what they refer to themselves as. They are a family of eight from Australia who was catapulted into the limelight because of a series of very fortunate events, as I refer to it in video number one, that just happened to catch the attention of a handful of major worldwide celebrity names like Ellen DeGeneres and Gordon Ramsay. And so the reason I selected them in particular as an example to share this concept with my viewers is that at the time I uploaded video number one in this series, the Norris Nuts in June of 2023, the Norris Nuts had 6.4 million subscribers. As of today's date, August 28th, 2023, they have 6.54 million subscribers. So they are very influential. They have gained 0.14 million subscribers, so 140,000 subscribers just in the two months since I uploaded video number one in this series about content creators. So that just kind of shows you how influential they are and the momentum behind their rise to fame compared to the 240,000 total subscribers they had back on Sabre's 13th birthday in January of 2018 after just over a year of her having appeared in a hysterical interview on Australia's Today Show, which I um, show a clip and talk about in video number one with regards to mental health and staying aware and, and making sure that we're able to discern and stay in touch with reality and what is real and what is implied or misrepresented is because the Norris Nuts family's primary audience is children. I want to talk about this topic because I want us to really consider 
at what point is it unhealthy for this family or any content creator, including myself, to participate in and not only participate in, but encourage and promote things like adult themed content for children, their target audience to, to see, and lies and false realities, for instance, makeup tutorials. There are a million content creators right now who are coaching young women on how to create makeup, looks, and appearances that are hundreds, if not thousands of dollars worth of promotional type advertising in their makeup tutorials for brands and products that imply that that's all they need to be beautiful and to be accepted. We we soak that stuff up like it's water. We just lap it up. And we, as grown women and men, encourage that in our young women that they need to look that way. They need to apply their makeup this way. This is what is beautiful. This is what, but it's not. It's not because it's not real. It is fake. What does one do? What does the makeup tutorial person do in an average day when they're walking around their house doing laundry and cleaning their toilets and cooking dinner? Like what happens at the end of the day when they wash their face off, wash their $75 look off their face that they wore for a handful of hours? For what purpose? To present a false self to the world. We're doing this to ourselves. We're eating it up too. We're lapping it up. And that's what we're talking about. At what point is it absolutely unhealthy? I have noticed that a lot of content creators present themselves in this fake way, which entice a lot of viewerships and subscribers, but we're not really paying attention to what's at the heart of the content and what we're actually feeding our minds and our hearts. Nobody wants to hear about other other people's reality. Everybody wants to listen to, or it seems, that what we're drawn to is what is false. And why are we doing that? Why are we sucked into these realities that are not really true? They're false representations of who we are and what we are and how we should be living and about what's important in life. They're complete lies. It's all about the fancy stuff. We watch that kind of content and we go, wow, must be nice to have that. Or, oh, I wish I had that. Oh, I wish I had that. Look at that beautiful thing. Look at that beautiful meal. Look at that whatever. And, you know, we just don't know. All we see is this flashy material content that is absolutely meaningless and doesn't help people in any way, shape, or form, or build people up, or encourage people in any way. This is the kind of content that is making us more and more and more unhealthy, emotionally, mentally, spiritually broken. We're, we're lost. We're stressed. We have anxiety. We have just so many problems because we believe what people are selling us, and we're not stopping to think, wait a minute, this isn't real. This isn't true. This is false, misrepresented, lies. I don't know the full story. You know, we don't stop and think. We don't use discernment. And I'm speaking to myself as much as I'm speaking to my viewers that we need to be a lot more careful. And the Norris Nuts are what I'm using to demonstrate how they got propelled into the stratosphere of popularity. My question that I want us to keep in mind is at what point is it unhealthy? At what point is it unhealthy for the parents, the children, for us? Like, are we watching this content with discernment and with level-headed rational judgment? Are we receiving the information that we're watching in a rational, realistic way? Or are we just becoming starstruck and blindsided and impressed with what we're watching, regardless of how false it is?
And I'm not saying the Norris Knots produce false content. I'm not saying that. What we're not doing as content creators is we're not looking in the mirror as we're producing content and asking ourselves that very vital question, how am I helping others? You know, a lot of content creators they might believe the lie that they're making people feel good about themselves under the guise of putting out happy um, content or videos or things that make people laugh. Well, at what cost? We're just getting a little portion of the whole story. Most of the time, we're not getting the full story. So at what point is a man healthy? And I think we need to be a much more mindful of the content we watch. I'm talking about falsehoods that actually hurt. But those untruths about life that distract us from what's really important and what steals our joy and our energy and our light and our individuality. We're all trying to be like everybody else. And so there's this melee of just falseness about people in our circles where we're just like, we don't even know the real person that we're talking to anymore. We don't know who's behind the screen because we're all electronic and on the internet and texting and emailing and group chats and we don't have a soul behind the face. We don't know the person at all, not really. With regards to the Norris nuts and using them just as an example, example to demonstrate what I'm talking about, I've seen a shift over the years that I've been a fan and watching this family grow. I've watched a very cheerful, athletic, energetic, fun-loving, and relatable family turned into high pressure, stress, self-criticism, and obligation. There's such a, I, I think that they're working very hard at trying to balance their rise to fame and trying to keep their family grounded. Now, back in one of the very early Norris Nuts videos, I wanna say five years ago, Saki jumped on a plane very eagerly to join her sister, Saber, at this theme park to ride roller coasters, something that Saki would never do now. In fact, the last few times the family has boarded a plane, Saki, has been featured in the video or the vlog that they show as being very nervous and very tentative and very um, upset that she is being asked to and required to fly. But as a viewer, what's the truth? Is Saki really afraid of flying? And if so, are they just pushing her to go or is she getting medication to calm her nerves or is she in therapy? And, um, you know, what is happening behind the scenes and at what point did she develop this anxiety and what happened between five years ago when she jumped on a plane in eager anticipation to join her sister on this, these roller coasters till now? I just don't know which is true. Is Saki afraid of planes or is she not afraid of planes? And if no matter which is which, whatever's true, what happened between five years ago and now that changed? And so that's just what I'm talking about. There seems to be a misrepresentation between what's real and what's not real. And we don't get an explanation as far as what is real. And I get it. Maybe there's just not time to explain something like that. This is just an example of what I've seen. Maybe they have explained it and I missed it. I have been thinking about doing this for a very long time, this series, to talk about little things that I've picked up on with the Norris Nuts and why, in my opinion, it seems like a false reality or at least, if not a false reality, um, that there are aspects about their vlog that are false. So there's this subliminal contrast, right, between what the Norris Nuts family sells us as real in their world when we don't know really if it's fiction or not. What is reality and what's fiction? What's true and what's not true for their family? And for the most part, if you just find yourself going, so what, it's entertaining, I respect that. I totally respect that. I do understand that. 
For the most part, I don't think fiction is the problem. Adults and children alike love fiction. There's no harm in that inherently, but there can be. When children watch or are exposed to something fictional that involves pink unicorns or blue talking elephants or other some such clearly unrealistic characters that they don't see in their real life, in their real world, they know that that's pretend. There's a delineation. They are, there's a clear separation between what's real and fake because in the real world, there are not pink unicorns flying around or walking around for that matter. There are no blue elephants talking to each other in this world. So children develop this awareness about what's real and what's fiction and what's fairy tale and what's their real world based on just visual exposure to their environment, whatever that environment may be. Now, similarly, us adults watch these makeup tutorials, for instance. We watch whatever content, you know, um, dance routines that people do in the middle of the subway and, um, Things that are not a normal part, uh, people jumping boats and things, these are things that are not a normal part of most people's lives. And so there becomes that, but we watch it and we watch it and we watch it. And then we go out into our own lives and we wonder where all this fun, cool stuff is. And we're just like, my life is boring. My life sucks. It's just not acceptable to us anymore. Just like for children, the fantasy and imagination, imaginary world is such a fun, joyful place to be. As long as they're being raised in a loving and safe home, there's no sadness when they have to leave the fantasy world or the fairy tale world. Same goes for us. If we are living in a joy-filled loving, safe reality, then when we depart from the fantasy or fairy tale, like as adults, if we are in a good place in our lives, then we don't turn the TV off or shut the internet down or turn our phones off at the end of the night and go to bed with a satisfied, peaceful, relaxed mindset that's cheerful and distressed by or distracted from this entertainment we watched. We shut our devices down and we're full of anxiety right before we go to bed because we don't have a nice car like that person had. We don't have the makeup. We don't have the money. We don't have the job. We don't have the boyfriend, the girlfriend. We don't have the hot person in our life. We don't have the amazing boss. We don't have this. We don't have that. And so it's all just disappointment. We shut the device off at the end of the night and we go to bed and we're full of anxiety about how disappointed and how unsatisfactory our own lives are. Why are we doing that to ourselves? Why are we doing that? And at what point are we as con content creators very much responsible for putting that kind of stuff out into the world and sharing it with people? I think as content creators, we need to be 100% responsible for our own content that we put out into the world. We need to build each other up, support each other, bring joy to each other. But with the state of things the way they are in the world today, I think we have to be very careful and very mindful of the kind of content that we're bringing to the world. And I'm of the opinion that the Norris Nuts probably deeply believe that the content they're putting out is very positive. And I think that's very true for the most part. But I'm also of the mindset that a portion of their content is false or at least misrepresented.
let's go back and revisit the fact that the Norris Nuts primary demographic is children. Now, as a marketing tactic, this, the Norris Nuts have been brilliant. They refer to their fan base as legends. They have a nickname for their fan base. You're only a real fan of the Norris Nuts if you know what the secret handshake is and the secret catchphrase is, which is catch me knuckles. So if you see the Norris Nuts on the street or another fan of the Norris Nuts and you do the secret handshake, you're a real legend. You're a true legend. But if you don't know and you go like this to a Norris Nuts fan or someone who claims to be a Norris Nuts fan and you get a fist bump or something like that, you're not a true legend because catch me knuckles is the real Norris Nuts Legends secret handshake. So their marketing tactics are brilliant. They have a retail brand line. They have their own theme songs with videos and everything. And I don't doubt that they've worked very, very hard to get where they're at. I applaud the Norris Nuts success, but I also don't buy for one second that they are a typical, normal, or average family, which is something they try to sell us, the audience, regularly on their YouTube channel. Every time I have heard them say they are a normal, average, everyday family, just like you, just like me, I cringe. And I cringe because it's just not true. Take, for instance, what we mentioned in video number one, Dad Justin is an Olympic medalist. Please tell me of my viewing audience, the average person in the world, is your dad, is your spouse an Olympic medalist? Not many are. So that alone means that they're not the average family. So immediately when I hear the Norris Nuts claims, and generally it's Brooke the mom and Justin the dad that's trying to sell the public on the fact that they're a normal average family. When I hear them say that, I cringe because I know deep down inside they're not. They're not the average family. Just by virtue of Justin, the patriarch of the family, being an Olympic medalist swimmer. But then after I have that thought, I go to all the other stuff that I'm going to share in the next video that makes me think, yeah, they're not normal. Yeah, they're not average. And then I find myself going, my goodness, I don't think that the whole of the content that they put out for children, their de target demographic is really a positive thing. Now, that's my personal opinion. Then my thoughts wander to all of the times I've thought to myself over the years that I've been following the Norris Nuts because again, like I mentioned, I am a true fan. Of all the times that they've said something or done something in their videos that made me go, that's not normal, that's not average. And I'm convinced more and more and more every time that they're not normal, they're not average, they're not typical. And yet in the very next video, there they are again saying that they are. And there's a part of me that wonders if they're trying to convince themselves that they are because they're very well aware deep down inside that they're not, but they're trying to sell themselves as they are. So there we are with the false representation or the misrepresentations again. And I go back to that question, at what point is it irresponsible and unhealthy for families, parents, leaders to be putting out content, to be encouraging, to be a part of producing content for the world that is actually harming people. So that's where we're going to wrap video number two. Join me again for video number three. We're going to get into a lot more specifics about why I say the Norris Nuts are anything but normal. Thanks for tuning in to Whole Wellness with Anne. Take care, guys. Bye for now.